In problem 89, we used the factorization theorem to find a sufficient statistic for the parameter of a geometric distribution. Now in this one, we're going to generalize that because the geometric distribution belongs to something called the exponential family. And we're going to just get a general expression for a sufficient statistic for a parameter in the exponential family of distributions. Don't know if that just makes sense here. So let's look at this. So if we have a probability density function or probability mass function, depending on the random variable is continuous or discrete, it's a member of this exponential family if it may be written in this form. So then you can see here that theta is a parameter, and what you've got is in the exponent is you've got some function a which depends only on the parameter times some other function k which depends only on the x's plus and then b is a function of only of a parameter plus c is a function only of the data and these functions just map those uh, things onto the real line we note here that there's a condition that the support of x is independent of theta right given this case then we can show that this guy here is sufficient for theta given a random sample of n observations. So to stress again, this form here is the one parameter exponential family and it covers for the discrete cases inclusive including Poisson, Bernoulli, geometric binomial where p n is known dot 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 because it goes on. For the continuous it includes the exponential, the chi-square, the gamma where we've got known shape parameter, normal where you've got a known variance, Weibull, where you have a known shape. Where I've got these conditions with known something or other is because, for example, for a binomial, it has two parameters, n and p. So it would not fit into this format. So if we have, suppose that n is known, which we usually know what n is known for a particular problem, it's, then we reduce this down to just one unknown parameter. Same goes with all these other ones where I say we've known something or other. I'm going to use the factorization theorem again to show that this result holds. Okay, so for the joint, we start with the joint PDF is equal to the product of the marginal PDFs, supposing x is discrete, which is, and this follows because the xi's are iid, because we've said it's from random sample, each of them follow this kind of, dis uh, have this kind of PDF. And then we just substitute for f, and that gives me this. We notice by the factorization theorem, this bit here depends only on the parameter, theta, and the data x through some function being this function in red. And then another bit here which depends on the data. So then by the factorization theorem, we conclude then that this is sufficient for the parameter theta. That's it. Very short proof. But just going over here because this is where main action happens is, so let's just drop the exponent. Just writing it out in more detail. This is like what I do in a rough bit of paper if you want to work out what's going on. This is for the first observation. This is for the second observation and so on. You're adding them all up to the nth observation. So I've had to change these bits in red. Because remember, when I write this guy here down, this is only for a particular x, and we're summing over for all different x values from 1 to n. Finally, the usefulness of this result, there's many, is like it encompasses both discrete and continuous random variables that you see a lot in basic stats courses. So it means like instead of looking at the properties of each, studying each of the properties of these you know, statistical properties or mathematical properties, we can just study this guy here, and then it follows that holds for all these guys. For example, we've just shown like for anything of the exponential family, this serves as a sufficient statistic. That means if I get hold of any of these uh, distributions here and calculate this part for it, the function kx, each of these will have a different function k of x, then we can say immediately that the sum of that k of x is sufficient for that particular um, uh, distribution. 
For those of you going on to study more advanced kind of regression, you'll hear about the generalized linear models, then though that is for this class of exponential family of distributions.